Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Jason Burns and I'm giving a public lecture and uh, this public lecture is open for dialogue, discussion and debate. And it's for everybody out there who is interested in democracy. This lecture uh, took six months to research and took a lot of critical reflection and thinking and so this lecture is not to be taken trivially and I would ask the general public to respect the contents of this lecture. I would ask those who are public policy makers in government departments around the world to take seriously what I'm about to say and to discuss uh, amongst yourselves the issues that are going to play out within the lecture. The lecture is entitled Democracy, Public Space and Preaching. We begin the lecture. The privatization of public space without due consideration to our democratic rights is a national disgrace, a disgrace that America, the European Union and global community share. The failure to provide clear guidance how our democratic rights relate to public-private ownership space reveals a systematic failure of our political leadership both in local government and national government and international affairs. There needs to be urgent corrective where private enterprises take control, control of public space. The democratic rights of the local people should be returned. A new creative vision needs to be applied to public space when it is returned. That vision should work with private enterprise as it does bring economic benefits to local people. But private enterprise should work alongside democratic rights. Local government has to have a two-way plan. That plan should be to encourage business to partner with public bodies in the area of public space so that city town centres are helped to develop economically. But also to see that's only part of the picture, but to protect democratic rights of that land and to encourage all communities to take ownership of that land in the exercise of their democratic rights. Those rights being free speech, the right to assemble and religious conscience. When public space is returned, there needs to be a return to a classical view of democracy advocated by John Stuart Mill in his book Liberty. The democracy we see operating in the UK, Europe and America is a parody of democracy. It is a shallow democracy, inconsistent with itself, dogmatic, partisan and will lead down for democracy if not urgently challenged. This shallow democracy is one that will police. This shallow democracy is the one that will police this public space, and it is not fit to do so. We need a more robust and fair interpretation of our democratic documents, and John Stuart Mill can help us. All those who love and believe in democracy must stand together as one, and fight all anti-democratic forces to return public space back to the people. It is the greatest battle we have to face since the Second World War. Next, confrontation and humiliation. I regard Middleton Town Council and Middleton Town Centre Management Company, also Middleton Police, as excellent bodies who do good work, but failed in many areas to protect democracy. How I came to these conclusions was over a period of two weeks. I have never been interested in politics, only voting once, and I have never been in political agitation. I am at heart an all-time gospel preacher of the mold of John Wesley and George Whitfield, more interested in saving souls than political activism. But when I was stopped from preaching in my local town centre, Middleton Town Gardens, on the grounds that the public land had been put in contract with private companies, I was shocked. Shocked that the police, the council and the company all failed to, con failed to conform to inform me of my democratic rights and fail to see the democratic rights of Middleton people have been taken away. 
I was also shocked about myself that I did not understand my democratic rights. Also, except for the police as they were impeccable, the company and the council made me feel I was not value, valued as a Christian and preacher. I felt duly humiliated. Next, ask not what the human right can do for you, but what you can do for the Human Rights Act. The Human Rights Act provides us all with certain freedoms in Europe. It provides us with the freedom of thought, the freedom of religious conscience, and to express those beliefs, and finally the freedom to assemble. The intellectual, artistic, religious and political freedoms of the people are assured. The Act is a good basis for democratic society. Yet my local officials failed to see the privatisation of Middleton Town Centre as taken away the peoples of Middleton's freedom. The problem is more compounded as the UK people show apathy towards these rights. Many feel the Human Rights Act is the meddling antics of Europe. Then you have the media who constantly snipe at the rights, reporting stories like the one about the prisoner who wanted his rights to porn magazines. Public bodies are no better choosing to implement some rights of the Act but lamentably failing to inform communities about these rights. What's more, they often fail to have ongoing training for the staff in the application and value of the Act. Then the Human Rights Act is constantly abused by people who apply it only selfishly. They fail to see, as Bernard Shaw said, with every right is a responsibility. Finally, you have the politicians. Some pat themselves on the back feeling all is well as we have these rights. They are full of presumption that democracy will always be. They have a collective amnesia as to the reasons why her sister act in Europe of 1948 came into being. That reason was never, never would Europe fall under tyranny again. Then you have the politicians who get ejaculation when the words Bill of Rights is muted. You have to walk before you can run. If the UK people cannot get excited in a document that treats all people with love and dignity, then they do not deserve a Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights politicians need to stop taking their Viagra of nationalism and get behind defending the Human Rights Act. In fact, all of us in the UK need to see it as a national emergency to defend the Human Rights Act and to apply it for the use of all our citizens and communities. It must be applied fairly. We all need to stop thinking my rights but think our rights, their rights. The judiciary sees the problem of responsibility but it needs to help in a national education program and judicial practice which encourage a more community responsible application of human rights. Next, public space and town management companies. Just to decide, those who are in America, just bear with this because this will have a direct application to you in a second. <coughs> this leads on to the problem of town management companies. First, I would like to say that they do not wish to take away the rights of business. These management companies have brought economic life to our cities and town centres. However, that they give in economic however, what they give in economic renewal, they take away in democratic rights. The Middleton Town Centre, Town Centre Management Company, is a partnership with local councils and companies. They have a strategy to renew Middleton Town Centre. So far, they have done a good job in bringing economic and social benefits to the Middleton people, but the space is no, no longer the people's. If they want to use the land, they have to pay. If they pay, they have to insure. They have to have insurance liability, and are subject to the company's rules. The company have commercialised what they say as key parts of the what they say as key parts of the town centre, just Middleton Town Gardens. Can the Middleton people now exercise the democratic freedoms on that land now? No, they cannot. In Swinton Town Centre, we see how this works. The Salvation Army wanted to play music and give out leaflets in the town centre. The town management company said yes, but, but, but put restrictions. They could give out leaflets but not talk to people. Is this really a democratic society that would put such restrictions and violate our democratic rights? Then the Salvation Army were told they were limited as to when they could have access to the town centre. 
But what if it was a poet or a political activist or a gay rights activist or a Muslim group? All the community should have the right to use the public space for artistic, religious and political reasons so long as they respect the rights of others. What's more, these ten town centre management companies in their strategies have absolutely nothing in their plans to help facilitate local democracy. If you go to the national website of the advisory body to the companies, all party town centre management company group, you cannot access their documents which they send to the town management companies unless you are a member. Is this really the democracy we want? On top of this, our Prime Minister sits on this board that is giving the strategic vision for these town management companies. Their website has much vision on the economic side of town centres. It has no vision whatsoever for local democracy and how public space can be used to encourage and protect the democratic rights of the local people. Except that is the management companies are warned not to tamper with Christmas lights of the people like them and they tamper with them at their peril. These companies are mushrooming around the UK and Europe. In America they are causing lots of problems for the local people in the issue of free speech. In America there are often court battles but the ordinary people lose to the big companies. This is also a global problem too. The Robin Hood Act and the Public Space Act. Public space, especially, especially prime public space in town, city and city centres is too precious to hand over complete control to business. We need a law called, I suggest, the Robin Hood Act. It will give clear guidelines to town management company partnership as to exactly the powers they have on public land and ensure the democratic freedoms of the people. It will call for clarity, correction, creativity and classical democracy and all public bodies. Public bodies will be required to clearly inform the people when they go into these company deals how this affects the local people's democratic rights and how they as a public body will ensure the people's democratic rights. Next, the law will call for all public bodies to take full control of any land they have sold or contracted to companies. They will will do this on behalf of the locals so that the people can enjoy, can enjoy and practice their democratic freedoms. Public bodies will be required to do an audit once a year to show how they use the land creatively, creatively in encourage people, encouraging people in democracy. Have they encouraged all the known community, religious and artistic groups to share the space? They will also be required to supervise that space, interpreting the Human Rights Act from a classical model of democracy as set out by John Stuart Mill in his book Liberty. Europe should do the same and call it the Public Space Act. This should be done, however, with the utmost respect for local businesses and due consideration for the rights of companies. I understand the situation is different in America, but some of these policies need to be implemented in public space concerning uh, democracy and the rights of citizens in America too. Public space and violence. The government has inherited a four-point plan to deal with terrorism in our lands. Part of that plan is to encourage community of cohesion so Islamic jihadists are not able to infiltrate young, disaffected Muslim youths. There are whole departments involved in this. There is a general feeling they don't really know how to solve the problem of homegrown jihadists. But taking back prime public space and having more of a creative use of public space would help strengthen democracy and weak, weaken the jihadist movement. Muslim youth should be encouraged to come to public space, read Muslim poems, share Islamic culture, share the Quran and engage in very vigorous public debate on the political issues of the day. This would make the Muslim youth feel they are part of UK society. This is much better than spying on them and promoting more moderate Muslim leaders to speak on their behalf. If prime public space is not taken back and used, the Muslims will feel isolated. If jihadists will thrive, thrive, then other military groups will form in opposition to them. Ownership for public space is vital for national security. Next, the doctrine of infallibility and the tyranny of the many. How we manage this prime public space is of utmost importance. For too long, governments have been tampering with their constitutions, implementing devolution and changing voting systems, but they are playing the fiddle while Rome burns. 
the sad fact is vast millions of UK and European people are not interested anymore in the democratic process. This is also with America. They feel unrepresented, unrepresented, marginalized, and have little or no confidence in their leaders. This is because the democracies are run by a secular elite that invented its own brand of democracy, not in accord with the classical model of democracy. They force this on the people with an iron will crushing any opposition that might challenge it. Certain sections of the community feel empowered by this as it suits them but may feel squashed or it but many feel squashed or ignored. Because people don't care anymore, apathy sets in, the elite feels all well, all is well because they run the show, but the rotten seeds of decay are there for all who will see. We urgently need to return to some ideas of John Stuart Mill the doctrine of infallibility and the tyranny of the many. This will bring new life to UK democracy and other nation states that follow our lead. Mill said that no view can claim infallibility, that the majority view needs to keep alive an opposition for its own good because it could possibly be wrong. Also in the defense of the majority view, it has to win by reason and evidence. He said of the if majority view silences position, then its view will become held dogmatically and fall into complacency. What this means is the secular agenda for democracy has to allow for the religious voice to speak, or democracy will decay. This also protects against the tyranny of the many if we allow opposition to our views. Opposition that respects the rights of others and the democratic process, then if the secular agenda becomes more powerful, or any other agenda, the minority will be protected. If these ideas were applied consistently, we'd see a, we would see a much more united and healthier society than we see now. It is a lack of consistent application to these ideas that would lead to the destruction of our de democracies, if not corrected. Public space and Islam. If we take these simple ideas and apply them to Islam, then we have some interesting results. Muslims should have full freedom as part of our democratic states. They should not be stigmatized if their woman wear the burqa, for example. They should be treated as equal and not controlled by nervous politicians. They should not be made to feel inferior because they hold to ethical or cultural values that are at odds with secular values. They should be encouraged to celebrate their faith and their public arena in live in they should be encouraged to celebrate their faith and enter the public arena in lively, vigorous debate on all political and ethical issues of the time. They should be allowed to do it with pride and dignity. Such an attitude will spark flourishing of scholarly and artistic renaissance, the likes of which we have never seen. They should also be encouraged to exercise their freedoms in prime public space, public space and Christianity. Christians in the UK are beginning to feel under siege. That also goes for Europe and America. They feel that their rights do not matter more. This means in the next 10 years you will have a hollow institutional churches with leaders, leaders who are ultra moderate who do not speak, but do not speak for the majority of the Christian community. Many Christians will start to move into house churches away from the mainline churches that have capitulated the, to the secular agenda. Many evangelical leaders sense this is going to happen. If tens of thousands of Christians go underground, this will speak, speak the death knell of democracy for a strong opposing voice has been silenced. More orthodox Christian leaders need to step up to the mark and enter the public arena and debate the Christian view. They must do it even if the age does not want it. They must do it and the secular defenders of a democracy need to listen even if the secular disagrees. For their ideas are not infallible. For the secular must defend its ideas by reason and evidence and not dogma. The secular must protect the minority or its, or its own voice, voice will die by complacency. For a few years now, we Christians have been on the back foot reacting to situations taking public bodies to court if they infringe our rights, but feeling we are losing the war. We need a much more proactive view of democracy and rights. We must enter the public arena and fight for a better understanding of democracy than the one that has been fed us, an understanding that truly defends the rights of all. 
In defending other rights, we ensure our own rights. Part of that proactive strategy is to take, part, take back prime public space for all. Some may feel as Christians I have sold out to secularism. No, I hold to all-time Bible-believing Christianity. True democracy can be summed up in this, do unto others as you would have done to you. We also have a theological framework which our understanding of democracy is built on public space and preaching. My ideas have direct impact on preaching which I love. Preaching has had a history of 2000 years. Preaching is at the very heart of Christianity. For a secular society to outlaw preaching it would destroy a long history and be a powerful signal to the Christian community they, that they are not wanted. Street preachers represent that history and the whole Christian faith. They are seen in our land often, often by most as an irritant. Most would just wish they would go away. But as long as they show due respect for the people around them, they should be allowed to preach. Street preaching has been a means of powerful social upheaval for good. Characters do not fit the mold, have come on the stage and upset the whole political and cultural realm. It happened in the time of John Wesley. Thousands of street preachers sprang up and it led to a wonderful change in the moral tone of the nation. These street preachers, few they may be, but they are vital for a healthy democracy. People will have to debate with them. This will make them reason and give evidence. It will make them think. If the street preachers cannot give reason and evidence back, then public will move on and feel that they have just heard unadulterated dogma and not bother again. If the preachers give good reasons for their beliefs, it will have helped the secular opponents to at least understand why they believe their secular values. When Middleton Town Centre and other public spaces are taken back for the people, I hope people would begin to appreciate street preaching more as a vital component in a democratic society. You never know, but the nation might need street preachers once again in the future. Next, Frere Journalism and the Gradition. In order for public space to be taken back for all people, including Muslim and Christian and other groups that may fail, feel alienated, for the public process, from the public process, in order to protect street preaching, we need a media that can handle the job. The reason why I've read stacks of essays and read John Stuart Mill these last few days and clarified my views is because a journalist made me feel I was a valued member of the democratic process. This journalist provides information on public issues for all sides, so you can debate and have an informed choice. I find this liberating. Journalism is at the heart of a democracy. A weak press and a democracy will die. Journalism is in crisis for various economic and social reasons. Maybe one role it can play is to empower, to facilitate the powerless, to help them tell their stories, to provide journalists can help people tell their stories, to provide people with information from various shades of the political spectrum on any given issue, a kind of fair Pedagogy, pe, pe, uh, pedagogy, pe, pe, pedagogy, can't pronounce it. Frere uh, teaching of journalism. Combined with this, there needs to be a return to the grand tradition of objective reporting. Journalism needs to really, journalists re need to really start believing in democracy again and not be so cynical. Renewal and national resistance will start with them. They need to stick together from all sides of the political spectrum and cry out for a new democracy based on more classical model. They need to fight with all their might, in parenthesis. We've seen how much of the major uh, journalists uh, recently have just been pushed around by those who, who uh, run the political and economic agenda, uh, just an aside. The grand tradition must return and bring back some sense and proportion to the nonsense that is going around in the name of democracy, but is really a fool's gold. Public space in the Middle East. We must always remember that others are watching us. One Muslim scholar, Tariq Ramadan, has noted how the Western leaders have supported 
Middle East dictators and yet they preach to these same Middle Eastern countries about the virtues of democracy. If we have lost credibility on the international stage with our double standards about the application of democracy, let us hope we can show some consistency with our own borders. New democratic states that look to Western countries as models will not be impressed if its own people cannot even use its own town centres for their democratic rights. Enemies of democracy will exploit these glaring inconsistencies, putting in jeopardy the fragile democracies that might emerge. How can it be inspiring for these Muslim countries to be democratic when the UP, UK, Europe and American people cannot stand outside their own parliament to protest? Incarnational politics and the end of the Tinseltown Westminster. Our elective representatives have a credibility gap with the UK people. There is an unreality in Westminster and at Washington for that matter. It is in its own, they are in their own little dream world playing their own little games. They fool themselves into thinking they are doing democracy. This 24 hour media spin and getting back handers from big business really democracy? Is that what it really all about? Politicians need to come out of their ivory towers and go to people. MPs should spend a month working in a hospital with a mop in hand and clean the hospital floor. They should see this as a lifestyle. The shame should be done with the senators at Washington. They should take some time out each year and do these jobs with the people they represent. One MP could spend a month working in the fire brigade. Another senator could spend a month working in the police as a police officer on the beat. This is much better than an MP sat in a surgery waiting for thought to come to them, or a senator sat at Washington drinking a little bit of coffee and not doing anything. This is better than coming out to the public when you want to be elected or for a photo shoot for your party magazine. This would restore confidence in our leaders like nothing before. It would bring renewal to democracy. It would mean that public spaces would be more likely protected because the MP and senators love the people and the people love their political leaders. This is what I would call incarnational politics. Just as Jesus Christ came down to be amongst the people, so our politicians need to do the same. Public space and secret societies. If public spaces are to be protected for the democratic rights of all, then secret societies need to, need to be rooted out of the democratic process. No public official should be allowed to take office unless they inform Parliament or Washington of their membership of such secret societies. No contracts by local government should be signed unless all board members of the said company declare openly they are, they are involved in these societies. Parliament and Washington and the public should have access to, to who are the members of these societies and the nature of their activities. This must start with the Masons then move on to any similar societies. This too will keep safe our public spaces and bring a healthy breeze into political life. I'm not into conspiracy theories but ordinary people know these things go on and the implications that has for civic life is drastic. I know what I have said means I now have many powerful enemies and they will seek to utterly destroy me. But if we are going to have good democracy, then the true democrat will fear no opposition, but work to defend the rights of the people come what may. The fire that burns in my heart for democracy will never be put out, not by a million masons against me. Public space and public responsibility. <clears throat> it should become second nature to everyone in our land that those who enjoy the freedoms of a democrat, democrat, democratic society must help in its protection. Every citizen needs to think of not only their own freedoms and pleasures, but think how their actions impact others. With these thoughts in mind, compulsory voting needs to be brought in so everyone has to vote who is able.
This will make the apathetic see the other responsibility to others. If a person does not vote, they should lose their benefits or tax breaks. Why should they enjoy the freedoms of the democratic society if they do not contribute if they do not contribute in safeguarding democracy. If this compulsory voting is brought in, it would revolutionize our democracy as the educated elite will really have to listen and be confronted with the new demands of the people. Collective responsibility needs to be seen in how we use public space. Those who get drunk at the weekend in their thousands are wasting valuable police and medical resources that could be used for the good of the community. I'm not saying these people should not enjoy themselves, but letting tens of thousands of young people stagger out of nightclubs, m many causing a nuisance, is not fair to the rest of society who picks up the bill. Next, the far right, jihadist, anarchist and terrorist. Those groups who are interested in violence or the suppression of others by victimization must not be given any freedoms to express their ideas in public space. The burning of poppies or giving out jihadist materials should be banned. Is it right that law-abiding Christian preachers can't preach in their own town centres, yet jihadists can stand in the streets of London spewing out hate to our armed forces and threatening the overthrow of our nation? You only have freedom if you take responsibility, that is what we say to the jihadists. The same goes for the right, far-right activist and the anarchist. It is also to be remembered, we, if we have ex-terrorists in government, we have democracy with a gun put to our heads. They are happy at present as they suck the milk from the breast of government money. But when the milk runs out, these terrorists will stamp their feet and turn back to their guns. We must proceed with due diligence at all times. That's just a, a little dig at the IRA. Next, the vulnerable of our society. Collective responsibility means we want to protect the elderly and the mentally ill and any of the people who are vulnerable. This means we want them to feel equal partners. We need to put on more events for them in our town centres. We want to see more elderly getting out and enjoying their town centres. We want to see more mentally ill taken out on trips into the town centres, not shut away as if they are outcasts who nobody wants. We want this for the vulnerable groups. A word to corporate business and the judiciary. Big business needs to realise they are agents of democracy. They should take more of the financial deficit in our country. They cannot expect to have profits and then push all the financial problems onto the public. The public can't take the strain. Cracks will appear. You need to stop trying to dominate public space, but empower it for the democratic, economic and social good of all. The judiciary also needs to take responsibility. It should stay vigilant and make sure it preserves a right balance between democratic freedoms and the rights of companies. It also to discourage the me me litigation suits and promote more us 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 approach to the law. It should simplify its procedures, give stiff penalties to criminals who are clearly intended to go on a life of crime. When a person has burgled a house, it should be seen as an emotional rape, and the burglar should get a prison sentence. Such an attitude would sweep away juvenile crime and make the public feel safe once again in our town centres. Also, if I take Middleton Town Council or the UK government to court, I want to know I can trust the legal system and not feel those who have more power than me can wiggle out of the situation by legal loopholes. Public service, be proud in what you do. The police, nurses, teachers, fire brigade and the army, an army of public servants feel undervalued and under siege. There is a culture of silence. Public servants are being pushed by managers to hit targets and follow government guidelines to the point public servants are bullied where they can't give the quality of service to the public they so much want to give. What this means is a lack of self-esteem creeps into, social into local councils which make them feel they can't do the job so they hand over leadership to company partnerships. There has to be a culture change where the public speak out and insist on giving the quality of service needed to do the job. They must do so knowing the public is behind them. The good of all come first before targets. Finally, public servants should see that they are there for the community, not the community there for them. Too often our own people feel the town councils are dictatorial who exercise power for themselves and not serving the people. This kind of attitude makes millions of UK citizens 
and American citizens feel they are visiting all-style communist officials rather than people who care about them. Blasphemy and the Arts Religion and the arts needs to take a more collective responsibility for the good of democracy. This will have a direct impact on how public space is used. The arts need to encourage more Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Hindu playwrights and novelists, etc. The arts are far too often, far too often follow a multicultural agenda mixed in with the spices of secularism. This means religious groups who have religious texts who interpret them in a literal way are sidelined in free artistic expression. For example, there is no national Christian playwright who represents at least half a million evangelical Christians in the UK. Failure to bring in Christians and other faith groups into the arts more will lead to those groups being alienated and stifle the creative interchange of opposing ideas. Having drama groups where Jews, Muslims, Christian playwrights meet together with secular playwrights will foster understanding and national unity. Just in parenthesis, um, those who think that I don't understand secularism, because those who are hearing me talk about secularism will think, well, secularism is about allowing religious people to have freedom. But as Jürgen Habermas um, has noted, uh, secularism has been dogmatic in trying to control uh, religious fundamentalism, i.e. in Christian fundamentalism in the West. And it's simply not true to say that secularism has no agenda. Secularism has an agenda and has an agenda to silence any uh, voice that challenges it. And the Christian worldview in the West has definitely been silenced by the secular bigots of today. That's a parenthesis. So, having drama groups where Jews, Muslims and Christian playwrights meet with secular playwrights will foster understand and understanding and national unity. The arts need to think twice when it tackles religious topics, making sure it is sensitive to the religion it challenges. Creative freedom comes with responsibility to others. If the arts tackle a subject that sends a religious community in convulsions, it will send a strong message to the religious community that do not belong in the democratic process. On the other side, religious communities need to be careful how they react if, if their idea, if their views of what a playwright or writer has said is blasphemous. They should try to assess if the artist is sincere in their challenge and be duly sensitive to their beliefs. If they feel their cherished belief is being desecrated, then they should not react violently. They should recourse to the law, then if they do not get satisfaction, they should, they should engage in passive civil, civil disobedience. They should go on a march, go on a hunger strike, or sit outside Parliament and refuse to move unless the piece of art is removed from the public domain. This will promote peace and understanding in our town centres. Next, the dying art of debate. The art of true debate is dying in our culture, which has a direct impact on public space and democracy. John Stuart Mill talks about listening to your opponent and getting all and getting all the threatening the over sorry I think uh, sorry I'll just We will get there. Sorry about this. Give me for a second, I've just lost a page. I think I've said most of what I wanted to say. Um, a 
Okay, yeah, the dying art of debate. The art of true debate is dying in our culture, which has a direct impact on public space. John Stuart Mill talks about listening to your opponent. And that's where we're going to leave it. Um, my research paper, uh, I've lost the last few pages in the printing out of my lecture. And um, I'm now going to do another le lecture on uh, Luther the Reformer. But the issue of debate, it's important because I think that too much rhetoric is, is involved at the moment, both in the media and on multimedia platforms. There needs to be more vigorous uh, academic discussion and debate where multiplicity of views are allowed to be listened to in the public space. And very often what you get is certain voices in the media are sidelined and not given an opportunity. Uh, discussions are not free and flowing, they're often controlled um, and there needs to be um, a much more respectful engagement with each other people's opinions and ideas, uh, especially on um, the internet as well. So. That's my lecture. Um, it's called Democracy, Public Space and Preaching. You might not agree with everything that I've said, and I understand that. Uh, some of the ideas that I've come out with might seem radical. Some of the ideas you might react from the political left or the political right. Um, you might react to it from a Christian or non-Christian point of view. But if this lecture at least makes you think about the nature of public space, Basically, the issue that my lecture is tackling is the fact that public space in town centres and city centres and villages are being given over to companies. And people are not realising that this is having a diametrical effect on how we understand democracy. And it's a strategic problem that needs to be addressed. The commercialization of public space where that space was used for debate, discussion, preaching, the arts, once you commercialize that then you've taken away the heart of democracy and that's what I was trying to get at. I was trying to give a new vision of public space. There are town centers, there are city centers. Um, Manchester city center is an example that are doing an excellent job and avoided and have avoided the uh, commercialization of public space and have allowed much more of a creative interplay in public space and they've done an excellent job in my own city but there are many many cities and towns around the world today not just in America or Europe but around the world that the, the politicians have sold out well, they've actually sold the rights of the town centres and city centres to big business and along with that you lose the democratic right to free speech and all the rest of it and my lecture democracy public space and preaching is really to challenge people to think about the whole issue of democracy and public space uh, and to think about it and uh, if it promotes discussion and debate, if it encourages people to write PhDs on it, if it encourages journalists to, to do things, artists, preachers, politicians, if, if, if just a few people respond to my lecture, then uh, I would have been really pleased. So thank you for listening and God bless you all. Uh, please leave your comments and uh, take care.